Hey everybody, Mrs. Alcorn here, going to talk to you about terrestrial or land, because terra, earth, biomes. Get pumped. So these are the objectives we're drawing from, from the AP environmental framework. So describe the global distribution and principal environmental aspects of terrestrial biomes. So what do you need to know about this? You need to know that a biome contains characteristic communities of plants and animals that result from and are adapted to its climate. You need to know these major terrestrial biomes, the taiga, temperate rainforests, temperate seasonal forests, tropical rainforests, shrubland, temperate grassland, savanna, desert, and tundra. Um, you need to know that the global distribution of non-mineral terrestrial natural resources, such as water and trees for lumber, varies because of some combination of climate, geography, latitude, and altitude, nutrient availability, and soil. And also, it's important to note that the worldwide distribution of biomes is dynamic. The distribution has changed in the past and may shift again. And actually, there is evidence that it is shifting as a result of global climate change. So biome, here's the definition. It's an area that shares a combination of average yearly temperature and precipitation. So it's really focused on the abiotic characteristics. Some examples, and I don't know why taiga spelled wrong, whoops. Um, rainforest, taiga, it's the, um, the boreal forest, temperate deciduous forests, grasslands, desert, tundra. You probably did a project on this in like third grade. I did tundra and I dressed up as a snowshoe hare. The community of organisms, plant and animals in a biome are uniquely adapted to live in this that biome. So what does that mean? So cactus, Camels, they have water preserving traits for the desert. Okay, the camels can hold a ton of water, and so can the cacti and succulents, too, for that matter. If you have any of those cool jade plants or aloe vera, shrubs and wildflower flowers store lots of energy in their roots. Most of the biomass is actually underground, so that um, because fire is a common um, phenomenon that happens in grasslands, so they need to be able to spring back up from the roots. You have seen this in your textbook, the characteristics of biomes. Um, on the y-axis, we have precipitation. On the x-axis, we have temperature. So, and notice that the it's a little tricksy here. You're going from a big number to a small number. Don't always think it's positive. Um, sometimes it's negative on the y-axis, or the x-axis and on the y-axis. So, notice here the tundra the average temperature is negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's like when we have a cold day uh, and you don't go to school, which you don't always go to school now, it's COVID time. But there's also in the tundra, if you'll notice here, very low precipitation, less than 50 centimeters in some places, okay, going up to 100. So this is cold and icy with decreasing temperature and also it has pretty low precipitation. Then on the other extreme, you have the tropical rainforest, which has high precipitation and high temperature. As you move down here, where the precipitation is lower, you wind up with the desert. Okay. Where do we live? We live here in the temperate seasonal forest. Fun, deciduous forest in New England. Oh, move my face. Biomes are, okay, you know this. The biome chart can also predict where on earth biomes are found. So this is mostly predicted by the latitude, okay? Not the longitude. Longitude is long, right? Latitude is across because this, it depends on the amount of solar radiation that is received. You can notice it's a little, you can see some mirror images that we have less um, land mass in the Southern hemisphere than the Northern hemisphere. So there's just um, a lot. So you don't see quite as many patterns, but if you look like at 30 degrees South, you have similar things to 30 degrees North. You have similar biomes, a lot of that shrubland. So, and also deserts at the thirties. And this is partly because of latitude, Things can also be depend on altitude as you get higher up. Generally, the temperature decreases. Um, oh, and there it is. So the tundra and the boreal are higher latitudes 
60 degrees. Temperate is mid latitude, like 30 to 60. And these are places that tend to have seasons like where we live. Um, tropical is closer to the equator, which is here, which is lower than you want it to be, right? Because you want to draw the equator like through the middle of all the landmass, but it's actually south of where a lot of people intuitively put it. So keep that in mind. Oh. The latitude distance from the equator just determines temperature and precipitation, which is why biomes exist in predictable patterns on Earth. So, um, and then the next slide, you're going to see uh, satellite imagery from Nas NASA showing you the greening Earth um, over the period of about 20 years, and we will talk about that. Nutrient availability is the big thing. So plants need soil nutrients to grow. Specifically, the three that they need that they don't get from photos, so photosynthesis, yeah, and that's what you've talked about your whole career. CO2 plus H2O makes glucose, right? But plants do need more than CO2. They have proteins, they have enzymes, they have DNA, and proteins, enzymes, well, an enzyme is a type of protein, but they um, need nitrogen and phosphorus, okay? Additionally, plants need a source of potassium. So uh, the, the three big ones for plants are NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. K is potassium. It always makes me think of special K cereal. I don't know. So they need, plants need more nutrients than just what they're getting through photosynthesis um, generally. And sometimes if you see like air plants or like lichen is actually a combination of um, a plant, a little like algae and a fungus, that's a whole other thing. Um, but what, how many nutrients are available in the soils determines what types of plants grow. So in the tundra stuff's frozen, it's cold. Okay. That's where Santa has his workshop. You know, there's reindeers running around. Um, so a lot of things actually lichen are common there. It's pretty sim simple, but very cool. Um, symbiotic organism, there's uh, a lot smaller plants, okay? So very few plants survive in the tundra because it's frozen. And that's something you definitely need to own for the apes exam permafrost um, because it's cold. The organic matter doesn't get broken down by decomposers. And that's what it's all about. To get nice, rich soil, you need to have uh, you need to have organic matter that's been broken down. And that's a little picture of the permafrost. You can see an ice wedge. Like you're not going to have a giant tree putting roots down in there because it's too icy for it to get enough nutrients from the ground in order to support its biomass. So you have little little plants um, up in up north and when you're hiking in the White Mountains, you get to this area, it's the alpine zone. It's very similar to the tundra. And this, this is at the, you know, in the big mountains. Um, and that there's something called the Krumholz and it's, there's these really small plant, small trees that grow because it's so cold so much of the year that it, they just don't get big. And it's the same thing in the tundra. So tropical rainforest, this is really what you need to know for the AP exam, memorize this. The tropical rainforest has nutrient poor soil. There's so many, there's so much stuff going on in the rainforest. I went to the Amazon once, I was lucky enough to go um, about six years ago and it's nuts. There's so many plants, so many cool animals, everything. There's so much life just sucking everything up. Now, if you ever wanna bury a body, a good place to do it is in the rainforest because there's so many, de it's warm, it's moist, there's going to be fungus, there's going to be worms, stuff's going to break down that body immediately. So keep that in mind. The bore boreal forest, so this is like pine trees, like northern Canada, um, like northern Europe, uh, Russia, northern, you know, the northern parts of Russia. Um, this is also nutrient poor because it's really cold a lot of the year, so there's low decomposition. Now, we here in New England, uh, in the temperate temperate forest, deciduous forest, sometimes it's called the temperate seasonal forest, and that's kind of a thing about biomes. There's different names for them depending on what uh, source you're reading. This is nutrient rich. Right now, the leaves are falling down, and that is really good for the soil because those leaves get broken down and they get incorporated back into the soil. And it gets warm enough, especially, gosh, this summer, it's warm enough for decomposition. 
Shifting biomes. Now, this is a really important concept to think about. So biomes shift in location on Earth as climate changes. So the warming, as the climate warms, the boreal forest, the aspen and the spruce are really adapted to live in cold environments. And as it gets too warm in the south, they need to go north. Now, as they go north, of course, they're not, it's not just like a vacant lot. There's other biomes, there's other ecosystems there. So they displace uh, the, some of the tundra. As the, so as the tundra permafrost melts due to climate change, you we expect that some of the boreal forests will displace the tundra and come in and then everything shifts up. The prairie will shift up. The temperate seasonal forest will shift up. So you can kind of see the clim current climate zone of Aspen. The, the range is in this, what is this, khaki green, and the core is in sort of forest green, hunter green, forest green. Um, so this is where Aspen lives. And we have a species of Aspen, actually. It's a um, successional species called Queaking Aspen. That's kind of neat. I'm trying to think if we have any at school. I have some in my yard, but you can see this is where most of the Aspen was from 1971 to 2000. It's projected that this is going to move northward, way north, like up in the, I always think that Alaska looks like a hamster, way up there, where it's, where the, um, even shifting here into the tundra zone. So you can see some of this happening in this picture. So practice FRQ, identify one characteristic of a biome and explain how that characteristic determines the community of organisms found in that biome. Thank you for listening. Al Corn out. Hey, so here is NASA's vegetation map, and this is really cool. This is based on satellite imagery, and there is an index of greenness here. As you can see, if it's tan, there's not as many plants. If it is darker green, there are more plants. So what did they base this on? They looked at several factors, including the number and type of plants, how leafy they are, and how healthy they are. In places where foliage is dense and plants are growing quickly, the index is high, it's dark green. Regions where few plants grow have a low vegetation index, and that's tan. So this is based on measurements taken by the Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer on NASA's Terra satellite. Areas where it did not collect data are gray. Okay, so let's look at some of these patterns. How do I make this? I'll just zoom in with my face. So notice we're starting in May, June, July 2000. and see what's happening over the course of the year. Nope, we're in 2003. That was my phone. Well, someone submitted an assignment late. At least they're doing it.
And there we have it all the way to 2020. Hurrah! So some things I'm seeing here. We have a belt here for the equator. And remember the equator, it's at, if you think of where Ecuador is, the equator is named after that. So Ecuador, well, I mean, the country is named Ecuador because the equator goes through. So, and remember, this isn't really flat. It's like the equator goes right through here and notice what's there. Tropical rainforests. Very good. 